Hi, I'm Matthew Hart. This is History in Five, and I'm going to talk about the metal that seduced the human race, gold. We don't really know what attracted our earliest ancestors to gold, but we can guess. It was bright. Perhaps someone saw a little piece of gold glittering at the bottom of the stream and picked it up. The second thing that would be gold's softness. It's malleable. You can shape it into things. We had no idea how long human beings had been shaping gold into objects until 1972, when a backhoe operator in the town of Varna on the Black Sea coast, digging a foundation, unearthed a Neolithic tomb. And inside that tomb, archaeologists found this vast hoard of tiny gold objects, 6,000 years old. But the important thing about these objects is they had no practical use. They were only for a single function, delight. Suddenly, gold was democratized. It moved out of the exclusive ambit of the ruling class, of the elite, of, of royalty, into the everyday, into the marketplace. States, countries needed gold to operate their country, to pay an army. What this meant was that suddenly there was a very big, fierce competition for gold. The main European gold supply at the time was a mysterious empire located in the middle of the Sahara Desert called the Mali Empire. The ruler of the Mali Empire at its height was a man named Mansa Musa, sometimes called the master of the gold. The countries of Europe had to go looking for fresh gold supplies. What the Portuguese did was to go looking for Mansa Musa to see if they could find a way into his empire. They sailed down the coast of Africa and they looked for a port that would open the way into Mansa Musa's empire. They never did find it. The Spaniards, on the other hand, sailed west into the Atlantic. Pizarro marched into the Andes, broke the power of a great civilization, the Incas, murdered the leader, Atahualpa, and absolutely despoiled the country. A 3,000 mile long mountain empire of this fabulous treasure of gold. After World War II, the United States had 75% of all the world's monetary gold. That's about 20,000 tons of bullion. Since the United States had all this gold, it was the only country whose currency was actually backed by gold. Other currencies were pegged to the United States dollar, and the US dollar was tied to gold. As the American balance of trade got worse and worse with the Vietnam War, with the oil crisis. This movement of gold out of the U.S. Treasury to other countries that were cashing in their dollars became a gusher of gold leaving the United States. And it became one of the top financial stories of the day. There was a mood of panic. What Nixon did to solve this was very simple. On live TV, on a Sunday night, he announced to the world that the United States dollar was no longer convertible to gold. If you brought a dollar to the US Treasury, they were gonna give you back another piece of paper. That was a dollar, no more convertibility. Gold all of a sudden is free to take off and reach whatever price it wants to reach. And that's the world that we live in today. You can order gold by picking up the telephone. You can order it as easily as ordering a pizza. Some dealers will even deliver it to your front door. How much gold is there in the world? If you scraped up all the gold that has ever been mined in all of history, all the gold bars, all the gold coins, all the monetary gold, every wedding ring, and heaped it into a big pile and shaped it, it would cover a tennis court, probably to a depth of about 35 feet. That doesn't sound like much gold, but at today's price, the block of gold is worth $6.6 .6 trillion. The thing is, it won't stay there. It'll go up, it'll go down, and only one thing decides, now that governments have nothing to do with it, what the gold price will be, and that's how much you want it.